Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. As you know, or maybe you don't, I read fantasy, but I do throw the odd bit of science fiction in the mix as well. And as I've just finished my second sci-fi title in the space of a couple of weeks, I wanted to take a quick look at what have been my favorite sci-fi books that I've read so far. So the number of science fiction books that I've read in total isn't necessarily a very long list because as I say I do primarily read fantasy and it's only over the past five or six years that I've started to drip feed some science fiction into my reading as well. But from the titles that I've read I have put together a top five of my favourite science fiction books, ones which have really stuck with me and which I highly recommend to anybody. And because science fiction isn't my primary genre I'd like to invite you to give me some recommendations of titles that I might like. I primarily look for far future and I do well with space opera so any of those type of titles that you think might really suit a fantasy fan like myself drop me a note in the comments down below and I'll take a look. With that said though let's have a quick look at the books that I've put in my top five and I'm going to start at the bottom with no honourable mentions we're going straight into number five and it wouldn't really be true to myself if I wasn't to include a self-published or indie title in the list and I'm going to put one at number five this is Eclipse by Herman Stauenagel. I recently read this one and I had a really good time with it. It was very enjoyable, very fun, and I really look forward to continuing the series when the second book, uh, Chimera, I think it is, is released at some point in the future. Although this one is far future, it still has its roots on Earth, and Earth does play a part in the story itself. It's a barren place, it's unlivable, and you've got space stations surrounding Earth, and there's people on there trying to keep humanity alive, and at the same time to get themselves all of the resources that they need to essentially repopulate Earth, to make it habitable again, and to be able to one day go back down to the planet. We feature two main characters in this book. One is on the space station Eclipse and he's learning that things aren't necessarily as he's always been told they are. So it's a bit of a journey of discovery for him and there's some really good and intense moments as he's uncovering these secrets and these truths that have been hidden from him and from everybody else. The second main character is on a spaceship. She's essentially a retired pirate but she's getting pulled back into her old life and finding it difficult to escape from it. Overall it's not necessarily a brand new concept but it's one that I felt was dealt with really well. It's a really enjoyable book. The pages turn really quickly making it a really accessible read and I thoroughly enjoyed it. In at number four on my list is Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton and the sequel Antimatter Blues is one of the titles that I've just finished reading uh, a few days ago as it happens. This one I really enjoyed the concept. You've got a character Mickey who is an expendable. He's got the number seven after his name because he is the seventh iteration of Mickey. His people have gone to a new planet and they're trying to colonize it and one of the reasons that Mickey is there is because he's an expendable. He isn't the top of the class in anything. He's not the cream of the crop. He couldn't get a place on this colony ship. There was only one option to him and that is to be the ship's expendable. So the expendables are people who sign up to do all of the really dangerous jobs and when they do those dangerous jobs they will invariably die. So before going out to do one of these jobs they will upload all of their memories and so forth and then when they die they have a new body essentially printed and those memories downloaded to it. So Mickey has died six times already, he's now in his seventh iteration and that's when things start to go wrong during what should be really a routine exploration of part of this planet. I thought it was a really interesting concept and it was dealt with really well here and we got some quite interesting and in many senses strange scenes as a result of Mickey being an expendable that obviously I won't talk about because I don't want to spoil any of the story itself but this one does have a couple of additional advantages for people who want that. As I say there is a sequel which is just about to be released at some point in March so you do have a second book to go into and there's also a movie that's going to be made of Mickey 7 as well although I believe the film itself is titled Mickey 17, presumably so they can show us a few extra gruesome deaths of our main character. For number three on my list, I'm going into The Expanse. I've not read too many of The Expanse books by James S.A. Corey, but I have 
got up to number two now, which is Caliban's War, and that's the one that I'm putting on this list. So this may well be replaced if I revisit this list later on with another book from the same series. I had a great time listening to the audiobook of Caliban's War, though, and it really helped me having seen the TV show The Expanse, which is one of my favourites. I loved the visuals that we had in there and some of the little things of science fiction that you kind of take for granted, and it looked like the cast and crew were taking it for granted because they were playing the part and it was nothing new to them. I absolutely loved that, and it did come across in the book as well, albeit to a lesser extent because you can't physically see these things. There were some great characters and I loved being able to see some of the scenes in my head because I'd loved the show. It was a bit like a reread in many senses because several of the scenes in the book were almost play for play uh, adapted into the TV show. Although there is a good plot to Caliban's War, it's the characters that really made it for me. And again, this probably draws a bit on my experience of them from the TV show, with great characters like Amos and Bobby, and my personal favourite, Avasarala, who just did not fail to make me laugh at pretty much every scene she appeared in, because I just love her sassy, take-no-prisoners kind of nature. And if, like me, you think that comes across well on the TV show, I think it's maybe even better in the book itself. So I'm really looking forward to continuing my journey with the Expanse. I know there is such a, forgive the pun, an expansive world to explore, an expansive plot that the books take us through, even beyond what you see in the TV show, and I can't wait to get to those. Number two on my list is one of my favourite authors, even though it's mostly fantasy that I enjoy him in. This is Adrian Tchaikovsky with Children of Time. I really, really enjoyed this opening book in the series. I didn't have as good a time with book two and even less of a good time with book three, Children of Ruin and then Children of Memory. But Children of Time in isolation, I thought was a really, really interesting read. A lot of people don't like the idea of this book and a lot of Adrian Tchaikovsky's writing in general because it does feature bugs and creepy crawlies quite heavily and in particular Children of Time we feature spiders. So we start off with a colony ship and when they arrive at their target planet the plan is to drop a module with a essentially a virus in it and monkeys so it is kind of a literal barrel of monkeys being thrown at this planet and the idea is that the virus is an accelerant and it will allow the monkeys to evolve at a much faster rate so that when the humans come down to the planet they're hoping that the monkeys will have evolved to a state where they can already have started getting the planet ready for human life to be able to survive on it things obviously go wrong there are native spiders on the planet and they start to evolve and to grow and I thought that was a really interesting concept there were some little oddities with time because you've got a long passage of time within the pages of just this one book and the characters that you have are not long-lived so with the humans there's an easy way that you can get around that by putting people into cryo sleep or whatever it's termed in the book I can't quite remember but with the spiders that you're also following as individual characters, they don't have that luxury. So the way that's handled, I thought was really well done as well, so that you can continue your familiarity with a set group of characters, rather than needing to be introduced to new characters every time there's a bit of a jump forward in time. Although I do love some of the technology that you've got in this book and this series as a whole, it's more the kind of natural side of things or the alien technology I suppose with all of the things that the spiders do and the other creatures that you come across that makes it really really interesting. So as I say I was disappointed with the second and the third book in the overall Children of Time series but the opening book Children of Time itself was an absolutely fantastic read and I do highly recommend it even for those people who don't like spiders they are characters, they don't really come across as spiders almost, even though they very much are. You get inside their heads as characters, and for me at least it was hard not to like them and not to root for them. Which brings me to number one, my favourite science fiction book that I've read so far, and this one is another one that I listened to and that really enhanced my enjoyment of it, I think. It's Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Although this one isn't so much of a far future setting, it does have that feel because you've got the isolation of deep space. But what I love about this book is the science and the kind of structure, I guess. So it is very unusual in the structure for a book. It kind of 
in many senses or in many places has a reverse kind of feel to it, a bit like the movie Memento, because you are dealing with a character who at the start of the book has no memory and we follow him as he tries to piece together who he is, where he is, what he's doing and why. And without going into the story too much, the where part of that is he's on a spaceship and he's somewhere in deep space, although it takes him a while obviously to figure out exactly where he is, where he's going and so forth. And I love the way that that happens, using science to try and uh, piece together where he is. Is he in essentially a box somewhere on Earth? And he goes through various experiments trying to find out the answer to questions like that. I loved it when various bits of memory came back to him and he was trying to stitch them all together to find out who he is, bearing in mind that at the start of the book, he doesn't even know his name until the memories come to him. So although the kind of amnesia trope isn't really one that I generally like, it was so well done in Project Hail Mary that it made it a really enjoyable read. The overall story had some real highs and no real lows for me. It was such an enjoyable read with some great moments as you get further through the book into the spoiler territory that I'll therefore avoid. I know plenty of people who've read this and people like myself who've listened to this and both sets of people have come to the same conclusion. So there is one part in the audiobook that I think works particularly well. But if you read it instead of listen to it, you're not going to miss out. You're still going to have, hopefully at least, a really good time with it. So with Project Hail Mary being my favourite sci-fi book that I've read so far, it's another one that I'm really looking forward to what's coming ahead because there is a movie being made of this. I really, really enjoyed the movie of The Martian. I love the humour that you've got in it and again the science that you have there. And it's a very similar feeling with the isolated setting and character that you've got in Project Hail Mary. So if you like the movie of The Martian, I think you can have a really good time with Project Hail Mary. And I hope that the same can be said, obviously, when Project Hail Mary is adapted and I can watch the movie of that one as well. So there we go, five great science fiction books that I really, really had a good time with. As I said at the start, let me know in the comments down below if you've got recommendations for preferably far future sci-fi, space operas and the like that you think I, as a fantasy nut, could really have a good time with. I'll hopefully catch you in the next video sometime soon, but until then, as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books. Bye for now.